as you can see, the entire globe, we are in amidst, we are in the middle of uh, population aging, huge population aging. So from where we are today, within just within a few decades, one in five uh, person on the globe will be 65 years or older. And that is a tremendous uh, shift calling for huge transformation in our social structure, economic, bringing about economic and political uh, transformation. And while that is happening at the globe, uh, what we are expecting is about 1.6 billion people turning 65 plus in a matter of decades. Closer to home in the US, we are about 54 million 65 plus years old as we speak. And by 2030, by the very end of this decade, that population will go, go rise to 70 million. 70 million people will be 65 plus, 65 and uh, 65 years and older. And this is a demographic turning point uh, in the history of United States population where every baby boomer will be age 65 or older. Today, each day, 10,000 Americans are turning 65. And just this decade alone, 18 million Americans will be adding to the 65 plus year population. Think about it, at the end of, by the end of this decade, one in every five Americans will be of retirement age. Accompanying this uh, population aging trend, what we are also seeing is due to lower decline in fertility rates, the population in the middle is thinning. That means by 2034, think about this, there is going to be a crossover of the number of people in the United States 65 years and older will exceed the number of people 18, 18 and younger. And that means there will not be at some, uh, by 2050, there will be less than three working age adults available to support the one older person. And that this brings about tremendous focus in terms of uh, what we call, people call it silver tsunami. Some people call it the problem of 2030 because it is going to, what we are going to see is transformation in our social, economic and political uh, structures in the, in, the, in the nation. And along with aging population, as the number of aging people increases, the brain is also at the same time getting older as we live longer. And therefore, what we are seeing is an increased incidence of neurodegenerative diseases. So if you are not familiar with dementia, so dementia is an umbrella term that explains the decline in the mental capacity so severe that interferes with the functions of daily life. So the symptoms could be loss of memory, inability to think clearly, inability to follow instructions or reason clearly. So dementia is actually a group of symptoms. The, con the causes that lead to dementia could be manifold. Uh, one that you might be familiar with, mostly heard of is Alzheimer's disease. Besides Alzheimer's disease, there are other uh, diseases such as Lewy body dementia, uh, frontotemporal fronto dementia and vascular dementia. And all of these together are called, what I'm going to use, the term I'm going to use is Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. So with the population, aging population increasing, uh, the, what we are seeing is also uh, the increased diagnosis of uh, uh, ADRD, Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. Today, 60 plus million Americans are living with this disease. By 2050, it is getting, it will be closer to 13 million. And just by the end of this decade, just as we saw, 70 million Americans will be, um, uh, 65 years and older, we are going to also see eight and a half million estimated to be uh, diagnosed with dementia. And barring any development, any scientific uh, advances in terms of uh, slowing down the aging process of the brain. The, uh, some, some of the specifics with the dementia is, uh, are very compelling and um, uh, on this also are, are concerning too. Two thirds of people di diagnosed with dementia are women. And there's an uh, increased incidence of risk 
among the um, uh, African Americans and Hispanic population. In fact, uh, older uh, African Americans run the risk of twice as likely to be diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's disease and related dementia uh, than uh, white Americans. And likewise, the Hispanic Americans are uh, uh, running the risk of uh, one and a half times. So as uh, uh, one of the person living with dementia, uh, talks about it, it's not just about losing memory. Often people brush aside dementia as just losing memory. As she says, it changes every aspect of your life, including social interaction, communication, reasoning, uh, emotions, reading ability, and so on, that it impairs with the activities of daily living. And so who cares for the people? As dementia takes hold, once a diagnosis is, uh, happens, and uh, once uh, the disease takes hold and goes from early to moderate to severe, who takes care of the uh, people living with dementia? And that's where we are seeing a huge crisis of care. Uh, today, the people who care for uh, people living with dementia are families and friends. 11 plus million Americans today are providing unpaid care. And they are spending, in 2020, they spent 15 billion unpaid care hours. So this is on top of the work, 60% the, the, the of these caregivers are employed. So this is in, on top of the work they do, uh, they are providing care for their loved ones at home uh, living with this disease. And the economic value is estimated to be $257 billion. Besides the family, uh, what we call in, informal caregivers, namely family and friends, uh, there are paid caregivers, but you can see the proportion. And uh, there is in fact uh, estimated uh, um, that there is going to be a severe scarcity of these paid caregivers uh, to take care of uh, uh, people aging. And this disease is a slow, has a slow uncertain progression and it is extended. Uh, the average lifetime of a person uh, diagnosed with dementia once diagnosis happens is about 48 years, but some are known to have lived even 20 years. So it's this uncertain slow progression makes caring for this disease very hard. And um, the cost of lifetime cost of caring for this disease over the period of uh, disease progression is about $373,000. Uh, it's fa in fact, it's much higher than uh, cancer care as well as uh, caring for person living with cardiovascular diseases. And it's only going to increase more. So soon America is it's expected to spend about $1.1 $1 trillion nationally just caring for people living with uh, Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And often these caregivers or lives are fraught with uh, emotional, physical, emotional, financial, and uh, mental toll. What happens during caregiving? What makes caregiving so hard? First of all, as this disease progresses, the person who is uh, uh, diagnosed with dementia changes in front of your very own eyes into someone whom you no longer can recognize. Therefore, often the caregivers are fraught with uh, uh, changing disease conditions and therefore they have to be acquiring new knowledge uh, in order to be a better caregiver. So often it's lack of knowledge about the disease itself and how to care for the person as a person living with dementia goes through these various stages of disease progression. And there is a ton of, as the disease goes from mild cognitive impairment to early stage dementia to moderate to severe, there is a ton of resources, both the uh, person living with dementia as well as the family requires. It could be geriatric psychiatrist, it could be respite center, it could be uh, elder care attorney, it could be nursing home facility, uh, because there might be a fall, risk of fall. So how do you find these resources uh, efficiently and also reliably? And the, the very specific nature of this disease is also that is uh, uh, very distressing is the psychological and behavioral changes that happen to, the loved, to, to our loved ones as they go through this disease. And these challenging behaviors are unexpected. They often occur at the middle of the night when uh, one is left with uh, uh, Googling or uh, uh, calling on friends and fam family uh, to ask for advice. 
and overlaid with all these uh, stresses, there is also the financial stress, whether my mom has enough resources, enough benefits to care, care for her uh, through her lifetime. Uh, and uh, there are difficult decisions, emotionally fraught decisions to be made also, because the disease, the caregivers can be uh, isolated, socially isolated, and can be stressed out. Um, uh, often they might be fraught facing the decision of placing their loved ones at home. And all of this is uh, uh, what I would call, you run the risk of suboptimal decisions. There is a lot of second guessing along the way. So caregivers uh, truly burn out emo physically, emotionally, and uh, mentally throughout caring for their loved ones. So we badly need interventions to transform caregiving. Um, not just for uh, uh, dementia care management, but also for in, in generally for elderly uh, care management. And these interventions have to happen at multiple levels, both for starting with individual level, where we are uh, coming up with uh, new uh, tools and devices and uh, uh, technology to help reduce the caregiver burden and improve self-efficacy of people with living with dementia. But we also need to think about community, how the community is structured in order for people living with dementia to live a better life, live, a, uh, live, live well with, with the disease. And we need to be focusing on public services as this is a public health issue. And how do we ensure that uh, the public services are available, whether it is uh, senior homelessness or uh, expansion of Medicare and Medicaid programs in order to make sure uh, that peop uh, elderly people are getting the care that they need. And last but not least, policies and programs so that people who are caring for uh, elderly uh, persons deserve the time off uh, in, a, in a recognized manner. So as you can see, this is a very complex multifaceted burden that needs to be solved individually and collectively by one and all. And what we are seeing is technology is coming to the, uh, coming to address some of the issues uh, in mitigating the caregiver burden. And uh, think about smart homes, out, uh, instrumenting the homes with smart sensors and uh, data analytics in order to make sure that there is safety uh, in living at home. Uh, think about wearable technology so people living with dementia do not get lost uh, as they exhibit wandering behavior. Uh, think about the medication uh, implements, technology to make sure smarter technology that ensures uh, safety, safety of uh, medicine taking. Think about uh, uh, therapeutic robots that can provide the comfort uh, dementia patients might require. And last but not least, socially uh, assistive technology services, which is what my company is focused on in order to ensure people have the information and advice at the moment that they need. And last but not least, uh, the disease prevalence as well as the disease care, access to care is not uniform across our nation. And how do we use technology as a leveler in order to ensure uh, that uh, we provide access to high quality care across the nation, whether it's urban or rural areas. So this field of zero technology is emerging. It's very exciting. It's a multidisciplinary area that brings technology and the environment, uh, the design of right technology and uh, environment to address some of uh, complex elder care related issues. And last but not least, Along in, in the technology space, there is what we are seeing is a profusion, uh, infusion of AI uh, right in the future of uh, dementia care. So think about ubiquitous sensors that are monitoring the lives of uh, elderly uh, person at home in, so that uh, uh, we can employ data analytics and machine learning algorithms to proactively prevent fall or other uh, uh, environmentally induced uh, risks. So there's a huge potential for uh, AI 
to be applied in this space uh, uh, to really transform uh, dementia care. And uh, in, in a way that's scalable, affordable, that which is very important in order to level the playing field and uh, reduce uh, healthcare disparities and personalized technology at scale. And as we introduce, as we come up with new technology, um, I'm always concerned about uh, the invasion, the intrusion of privacy and safety of the very people whom we are trying to protect with the use of technology. So every technology inventor, uh, solution builder needs to be extremely cognizant of uh, uh, thinking through the implications of privacy so that the right balance of privacy and the utility of technology uh, is well understood and can be communicated. So hopefully I uh, gave you a, a view, glimpse into what is brewing amongst us, um, in the middle of us. So we all can work together to change the nature of uh, aging care um, for for our grandparents, for our parents, and for us in our later years. Thank you.